Chris, you had this amazing career. Uh, I remember watching you on Def Jam, <laughs> then watching you blow up from movie to movie to movie to the whole Rush Hour thing, yeah. and then it was like, poof. Yeah. Where is Chris? It's a lot, a lot in my life, you know. Yeah. Uh, the way I kind of stepped back from Hollywood at one point, you know, being the highest paid actor in Hollywood. Yeah. I don't know what he was going through internally, emotionally. He might have got really tired of the business. There's maybe some layers in there that he hasn't really spoken about inside the business. I know how the business can be. You know, everybody pulling at you, wanting you to do all kind of stuff, putting that pressure on you. Chris Tucker was once the highest paid actor in Hollywood. According to Celebrity Net Worth, in total, Chris earned at least $50 million from his work in the Rush Hour franchise alone, roughly $65 million after adjusting for inflation. Additionally, Tucker allegedly knew everything about anyone. He knows everybody. <laughs> like, I'm not even kidding. You can bring up a name. It doesn't matter if it's like Muhammad Ali, Paul McCartney, Jesus. And then one day he vanished from Hollywood, leaving people wondering, could it be that he knew a little too much and the powers that be felt threatened by what he knew? Well, this has happened to so many black comedians such as Cat Williams. But unlike Cat, Tucker chose to completely exit the limelight. But now it appears like Chris has finally spoken on the true reason why he left Hollywood. So what exactly did he say? Uh, the way I kind of step back from Hollywood at one point, you know, being the highest paid actor in Hollywood. Yeah. But I, I felt like, you know, it was it was a ceiling right there and yeah. I wanted more. It wasn't enough. Raised in Atlanta alongside two sisters and three brothers, Chris and his siblings found joy in entertaining each other, marking the time he discovered his passion for comedy. In high school, he earned the title of most humorous and delved into hosting talent shows and performing stand-up comedy. At 19, he relocated from Atlanta to Los Angeles, embarking Working on a mission to jumpstart his comedy career. Shortly thereafter, he secured a coveted spot on Def Comedy Jam, where his dynamic, rapid-fire delivery and infectious energy quickly captivated audiences. His versatility allowed him to transition seamlessly, making appearances in music videos for renowned artists such as Dr. Dre, Heavy D, Tupac, and Mace. The pivotal moment in his acting career occurred with the breakout role of Smokey in Friday. F. Gary Gray, the film's director, recounted to the New York Times how he ardently advocated for Chris over more established actors like Chris Rock and Tommy Davidson. Despite an audition that was merely okay, Gray recognized Chris's unparalleled improvisational skills and perceived in him the star quality needed to breathe life into the smoking-obsessed character. He said, Chris's audition was just okay. It wasn't great, but his ability to improvise was unmatched. He saw something in Chris and believed he had the star quality to bring the smoking-obsessed character to life. And he was right. Working with only a $3.5 million budget, they rushed through the filming and wrapped things up in just 20 days. Following Friday's 1995 release, Chris and his co-stars Ice Cube, the late John Witherspoon, Tiny Lister, and Nia Long helped the film become a cult classic. The movie brought in $28.5 million and launched Chris's career as a bona fide actor. In Friday, Tucker portrayed the character Character Smokey, a hilarious and energetic substance addict whose antics had the audience in stitches. Gotta start the day off right, man! This role was a stark departure from his clean-cut comedy routines, showcasing Tucker's impressive range and versatility as an actor. It was evident that he was more than just a one-trick pony, and the world took notice. However, it was the year 1997 that would be the turning point in Tucker's career. He had not one, not two, but three hit movies released in the same year. The world was witnessing the meteoric rise of a Hollywood sensation. Tucker starred in The Fifth Element, an action-packed sci-fi extravaganza that showcased his ability to carry a big budget blockbuster. He followed it up with Money Talks, a hilarious comedy that had audiences rolling in the aisles. And just when we thought he couldn't get any better, Tucker graced the screen in Quentin Tarantino's Jackie Brown, proving that he had the chops to hold his own alongside veteran actors in a crime drama. By this time, Tucker's career had blown up, and he was even being looked up to by current Hollywood elites like Jamie Foxx. In fact, Foxx spoke about an incident in which Tucker got him shook. The defining juncture that reverberated through his career occurred when Chris Tucker, an unexpected contender, swiftly claimed the spotlight. 
Fox, celebrated for his exceptional flair and artistic versatility, found himself profoundly disconcerted by this sudden twist of fate. During a candid appearance on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert, Fox reflected on a pivotal moment when fame briefly swelled his ego, stemming from his tenure on In Living Color. He candidly recounted his astonishment when he first encountered Tucker on stage. He stated, Who is that on stage? I said because I just came up. I'm Jamie Foxx. Who could that be funny? You didn't mean and I opened that door. It was a skinny little black dude with a tank top on it didn't fit. It was Chris Tucker and when I say he was unaliving them and it shook me and I knew that I wasn't funny like that. The incident, as narrated by Fox, unfolded against the backdrop of their shared passion for comedy. Tucker, a rising star in the comedic realm, had already carved out a niche for himself with his distinctive style and infectious energy. In a moment that showcased Tucker's unapologetic authenticity, he managed to catch Fox off guard and shake the foundations of his self-assured demeanor. The unexpected encounter served as a defining juncture for Fox, prompting him to reevaluate the delicate balance between fame and humility. It became a stark reminder that in the unpredictable landscape of Hollywood, even the most celebrated artists are susceptible to moments of vulnerability. Tucker's ability to leave an indelible mark on Fox, a seasoned performer in his own right, speaks to the profound impact of genuine and unfiltered talent. In any case, all of Hollywood was in awe of Tucker's talent and box office draw, and he was on top of the world. The offers were pouring in, and it seemed like there was no stopping this rising star. But little did we know that beneath the surface, Tucker was beginning to feel boxed in. You see, success in Hollywood often comes with a price. As much as we like to believe that actors have control over their careers, the truth is that they are often at the mercy of powerful producers, directors, and studios. For Tucker, this meant being bombarded with similar roles, the kind that played to his comedic strengths, but failed to explore the full range of his abilities. The gossip columns began buzzing with rumors about Tucker's refusal to accept certain roles. He became selective turning down lucrative offers that didn't align with his vision for a diverse and meaningful career. Some industry insiders labeled him as picky, while others saw it as a rebellion against being typecast. As the years went by, Tucker's absence from the big screen only fueled the gossip mill. Yes, he made a few sporadic appearances, hosting award shows and releasing a stand-up special on Netflix, but it wasn't enough to quell the whispers. Fans wondered if he was planning a grand comeback, while critics questioned if he had lost his star power. In truth, Tucker was playing a dangerous game in an industry notorious for being fickle. Hollywood had a long-standing history of pigeonholing black artists into stereotypical roles, perpetuating racial biases and limited opportunities for authentic representation. It was as if they couldn't see beyond the color of his skin, denying him the chance to showcase the full extent of his talent. Typecasting was another weapon Hollywood used to keep Tucker in a box. They kept offering him roles that played on racial stereotypes, making him this exaggerated, hyperbolic, and loud character. It was like they were stuck in a time warp, refusing to let him evolve as an actor and grow beyond the confines of these limiting roles. Beyond the limitations of typecasting, Hollywood's penchant for dominance is evident in its preference for actors who conform to its established standards. Chris Tucker, a celebrated actor known for his role in the Rush Hour trilogy, experienced the apex of success in his career. However, feeling constrained by the industry's limitations, he made a conscious decision to step back. Reflecting on his retreat from Hollywood, Tucker expressed a desire for more than the perceived ceiling of success. He sought a broader perspective on life by engaging in personal experiences, global travel, and humanitarian endeavors. In an interview with My Classics ATL, Tucker emphasized that his aspirations extended beyond personal accolades, highlighting the importance of becoming someone who contributes positively to the world. At the time, many questioned why a highly paid actor would voluntarily step away from such a privileged life. The answer lies in Tucker's yearning for freedom from Hollywood's control. The entertainment industry is notorious for dictating not only an actor's career trajectory, but also influencing their personal choices, including how they dress and behave. Hollywood's inclination to exercise authority over its performers was a force that Tucker actively resisted. He chose a path of independence, rejecting the industry's constraints on individual expression. For him, the decision to step back was a deliberate choice to break free from the pervasive control exerted by Hollywood and pursue a more authentic and liberated existence. Additionally, there was also the issue of emasculation faced by young black artists in Hollywood. Emasculation refers to the undermining of one's masculinity, often through ridicule, degradation, 
sterilization or infantilization that showcase their depth and humanity. In Tucker's case, emasculation was evident in how he was continuously pushed into roles that emphasized humor over depth, effectively reducing him to a one-dimensional character. This emasculation not only affected his career opportunities, but also reinforced harmful stereotypes that belittled the intelligence and emotional range of black men. But amidst all the challenges and obstacles, Tucker remained steadfast in his quest for more meaningful roles. Adding fuel to the fire, Tucker's newfound faith in Christianity was cited as a reason for turning down certain roles. He wanted to be a positive role model and felt some characters didn't align with his spiritual journey. While some admired his dedication, others wondered if he was rebelling against Hollywood's expectations. Hollywood's reluctance to embrace change and diversity in the late 90s and early 2000s only served to stifle the growth and potential of talented black artists like Chris Tucker. They were handed a script, but the lines were already written for them, pigeonholed into roles that perpetuated harmful stereotypes and failed to explore the full spectrum of their abilities. These talented artists had little control over their careers. The power dynamics in Hollywood left them at the mercy of decision makers who didn't always have their best interests at heart. It was like they were puppets and the strings were being pulled by others. No wonder they couldn't break free from those stifling roles. What's more, Hollywood elites were allegedly bossing around their actors like they were jesters in a medieval court. And who better to illustrate this scandalous tale than the one and only Chris Tucker, who found himself playing the role of a jester in the presence of none other than former U.S. President Bill Clinton. Picture this, Tucker, the rising star of Hollywood, jet-setting with Clinton on a memorable trip to Africa. It should have been all glitz and glamour, right? Well, not quite. Tucker recalled the experience with a mix of fondness and humor, but it couldn't hide the truth behind those laughs. During their travels to several African countries, Tucker sensed that he was being bossed around by Clinton, like a lowly jester at the beck and call of his noble king. Man, everywhere we went, he wanted me to do them. We were in little parties at night. Tucker, come, come to me. Come to me. Come on over here. Come on. Every country we went to, finally I got tired. We Tucker entertained Clinton and his entourage with his spot-on impressions of the former president. Clinton seemed to enjoy the performance, so Tucker kept the show going at various gatherings and parties. Can you imagine? An A-list actor reduced to performing for the amusement of powerful figures. It's just scandalous. Now, let's not forget the power dynamics at play here. Tucker's willingness to entertain and follow Clinton's requests painted a picture of an artist bowing down to the whims of a powerful figure. Hollywood's elites with their strings of influence had Tucker dancing to their tune, like a puppet on strings. The whole situation smacked of a emasculation, the undermining of Tucker's masculinity and power. He appeared to be subservient to Clinton's circle, diminishing his standing as a talented actor with a unique voice in the industry. It's infuriating to think that Hollywood's elites could wield such control over a rising star like Tucker. And this wasn't an isolated incident. The entertainment industry has a long history of treating its actors like jesters in a medieval court. Just like the jesters were tasked with entertaining nobility, actors are often expected to amuse and entertain Hollywood's elite. It's like they forget that these actors are talented artists with dreams and aspirations of their own. But Tucker's trip with Clinton wasn't just about laughs and games. It gave rise to criticism and cynicism from detractors who saw him as nothing more than a jester in the court of a king. They questioned why a talented actor like Tucker was reduced to performing for the amusement of the president and his associates. It's a sad reality that talented black artists like Tucker often face in Hollywood. They are pushed into roles that perpetuate harmful stereotypes, and their talent is overshadowed by the whims of those in power. It's like they are pawns in a game played by the elites, with little agency to break free from the shackles of typecasting and emasculation. In any case, after taking a hiatus from Hollywood, Chris Tucker's life became a mess. In April 2005, the actor's life took a dramatic turn when he was pulled over in Georgia for driving his Bentley at a staggering 109 miles per hour on the interstate. The situation escalated as he faced charges of reckless driving and fleeing to elude, stemming from his failure to pull over for state troopers immediately. Tucker asserted that he hadn't seen the trooper or heard the sirens during the ensuing 10-mile chase. The surprising reason for his high-speed escapade was his alleged attempt to reach his 11 a.m. church service in South Carolina. Ultimately, he pleaded guilty to the charges, accepting a fine of $6,999. As reported by Today.com, in 2007, Tucker made a temporary comeback to the big screen with the release of Rush Hour 3, a project that reportedly earned him a substantial $25 million, according to the New York Times. Eager to celebrate his success, he invested in a $6 million home situated in an Orlando 
Orlando, Florida suburb. However, this purchase was not without financial strain, as revealed by The Hollywood Reporter, which disclosed that Tucker had taken out a $4.2 million loan to acquire the lavish five-bedroom residence. Following this brief resurgence, Tucker once again retreated from the limelight, facing a different kind of spotlight, that of financial distress. While absent from blockbuster films, he garnered attention for being heavily indebted to the IRS. In July 2010, TMZ reported that the actor owed a staggering $11.5 million in unpaid federal taxes, spanning the years 2001, 2002, and 2004 through 2006. The financial ordeal extended beyond the federal level, with the state of California filing a lien against Tucker for allegedly neglecting to pay $3.5 million in state taxes during the same time frame. As per NBC News, the actor's newly acquired Orlando home was at risk of being seized due to a debt amounting to $4.4 million. Adding to his financial woes, the IRS placed an $11.5 million lien on the residents, aiming to collect the unpaid taxes. To avert foreclosure, Tucker engaged in negotiations for a short sale of the property. Despite owing $4.4 million, the bank accepted a bid from a buyer who offered a mere $2 million. Simultaneously, he sold another Florida residence for just over $1 million, significantly lower than the initial asking price of $1.5 million. Despite these setbacks, Tucker attempted to regain his financial footing in 2011 by returning to stand-up comedy with a nationwide tour. However, his troubles persisted. In February 2012, the state of Georgia exacerbated his financial woes by adding an additional half a million dollars to his tax bill for the failure to pay in 2007. This pushed Chris Tucker's total debt to a staggering sum, exceeding $12 million. Anyway, in a pivotal turn of events, Chris Tucker found himself finally captivated by a script that resonated with him, leading to his enthusiastic acceptance of the role of Danny in the 2012 film Silver Linings Playbook. This marked a significant moment in his career, breaking a hiatus that followed, lasting four years. The resumption of his on-screen presence occurred with his portrayal of Albert in the 2016 film Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk. During a candid 2017 interview with a Central, Chris Tucker took the opportunity to assure his fans that, despite his temporary withdrawal from the limelight, he remained actively engaged in various pursuits. Beyond the realm of acting, he embarked on philanthropic endeavors, establishing his own charity. Simultaneously, he continued to connect with audiences through his enduring passion for stand-up comedy. In his own words, he emphasized his selectivity in choosing projects. I am picky. I like to do stuff I can bring something to. I don't want to do something to just be doing something. Since 2017, Chris Tucker's cinematic journey has navigated a somewhat quieter path in terms of blockbuster hits. However, whispers of a potential reunion with Jackie Chan for the much-anticipated Rush Hour 4 Inches have stirred the entertainment landscape. Landscape. While the specifics are still being worked out, fans eagerly await the prospect of witnessing the dynamic duo back in action. Beyond the potential Rush Hour 4 Inches project, Chris Tucker has expressed openness to another sequel, this time for the iconic Friday series. Titled Last Friday, he articulated his willingness to participate as long as the narrative makes sense and promises to bring joy to fans. This revelation adds an intriguing layer to Chris Tucker's future endeavors, hinting at a possible revival of beloved characters and narratives that have left an indelible mark on popular culture. As the anticipation builds around these rumored projects, it's worth reflecting on Chris Tucker's enduring impact on the entertainment industry. From his early days of comedic exploration in Atlanta to the heights of Hollywood success, Success, Tucker's journey exemplifies resilience and a commitment to projects that resonate with his artistic sensibilities. His ability to seamlessly transition between stand-up comedy and compelling on-screen performances speaks volumes about his versatility as an entertainer. Furthermore, the four-year hiatus that followed Silver Linings Playbook and Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk highlights Tucker's deliberate approach to his craft. Rather than succumbing to the pressures of a constant spotlight, he chose a path that allowed him to pursue meaningful projects and maintain authenticity in his artistic expression. In any case, Cat Williams has spoken about these pressures of Hollywood and how more often than not, black comedians fall prey to these pressures in order to achieve popularity and wealth. For context, Cat Williams is an incredibly talented comedian who has unfortunately never quite reached the commercial success he deserved. Although personal issues and legal troubles have undoubtedly played a part in his struggle, 
struggles, there's also something else holding him back. You see, Kat has a long history of calling out Hollywood elite and their shady ways of controlling black celebrities. In a 2013 interview with Black Tree TV while discussing his role in Scary Movie 5, Kat delved into some interesting topics, including a theory about black actors being forced to wear dresses on screen in order to progress to the next level of fame. It's worth noting that this interview came out not long after Kevin Hart appeared on an SNL skit wearing a dress. When asked about Dave Chappelle's claims that black actors are pressured into wearing dresses, Kevin refused to cross that line. Definitely haven't ran into to put on a dress. Uh, I mean, you know, you, you have to have you have to have boundaries. You have to have limits that you refuse to cross. Uh, you know, for me, I know what they are. Uh, they've yet to be challenged. He further said he has to protect his brand at all cost. You need to protect your brand at all times. When things happen that can possibly affect your brand, your your brand can be diminished, and and you don't you don't want that to happen. So. You know, protecting my brand is, is definitely a priority. As for Dave Chappelle, he actually spoke about this on Oprah and said the same thing happened to him when he was filming a movie with Martin Lawrence. He put this dress on and, huh? What? The prostitute? Nah, I'm not doing that. I don't feel comfortable with it. It's even more unsettling that despite Dave's discomfort with wearing a dress, the producers still attempted to coerce him and painted him as difficult. But Dave stood firm on his decision of not wanting to put on a dress just to look funny. Where the wear the dress. I don't want to wear the dress. I want to wear this dress. You know what I mean? This is, oh gosh, this guy's so difficult. They leave. Years later, when Kevin Hart appeared on SNL wearing a dress despite previously claiming he would never do so, many fans accused him of selling out to the Hollywood elite. This situation brings us to what Kat said when he was asked to comment on it. He explained that the whole issue is much bigger than Kevin Hart because he wasn't the first or last black actor who wore a dress before making it big in Hollywood. Kevin doesn't have to worry about what people are going to say about him wearing a dress because of the long line of dress wearing people before him. So now <laughs> we have Big Mama's house one, two, and three. According to Kat, the elites' next target was Kevin Hart. So now I'm saying, why are we picking old poor little Kevin Hart? Because it was his turn next. After Kevin Hart wore a dress on SNL, his career skyrocketed, landing him lead roles in blockbuster movies and filling up arenas. It's worth noting that both Cat Williams and Dave Chappelle are undeniably successful comedians, but they don't have the same level of mainstream success as Kevin. Cat Williams even spoke out about the dark side of Hollywood, claiming that the industry's elites control black celebrities through some shady practices. According to Williams, he and Dave Chappelle refused to join the Illuminati or let the elites control them, which which may have contributed to their lack of mainstream success compared to Hart. Yeah, we are against the Illuminati at our own detriment. Mm. When people are against the Illuminati, then they get punched in the face all the time. The press hates them and nobody likes them. Kat also admitted that he was naive at first and didn't fully comprehend the risk of speaking out against the powerful individuals in the industry. He had to learn the hard way and experience countless setbacks before he truly understood the magnitude of who he was up against. So I didn't understand that. They had to sting me a million times. I'm still not going to join, but I respected them. You may already be aware that Cat Williams' reputation has been tarnished by the mainstream media. While it's true that he has had a few public incidents, the tabloids have often sensationalized and exaggerated the stories to make him appear unstable. Now, if you're wondering why he never bothered to defend himself, Kat revealed that he stopped trying to fight the tabloids because he learned the hard way that going against them and exposing those who control the media can be a dangerous game that could cost you your life. Your mouth is really, really big and you try to tell the truth for a living and you like to air people out. Hatred is. In any case, fans are happy that Tucker managed to move past Hollywood's desire to control and pigeonhole him. I'm glad that he didn't conform to Hollywood standards, and I give him a salute for making an exit from all those evils that be, one fan commented. A second fan wrote, Chris Tucker has been blessed to prove himself as a bankable actor early in his career. This has afforded him the ability to call his own shots in Hollywood. Now he's ready to re-emerge and his fans are anxiously ready to receive him. While a third fan added, I love. He didn't put out a bunch of crappy movies before trying to be serious. He loved his life. I love this for him. He's going to have an amazing acting career. He's a very talented actor now. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.